Vibranium is not only one of the most powerful metals in the entire universe, but it also has so many different unique uses. Like, you can make impenetrable armor out of it, devastating weapons, entire buildings, heck, you can even take a sprinkle of Vibranium and mix it with protein powder and you'll live for like another four years. At least, I think that's how that works. But what exactly is the most powerful Vibranium weapon? That's what I'm curious about, so I decided to make a ranking of some of the strongest weapons made from that special metal that we've seen in the MCU and in the comics. Well, let's get into it right now. I wanted to start this list by talking about a different type of vibranium, because as it turns out, not all vibranium is created equal. But first, I have to talk about Khazar. If you don't know, Khazar is the Lord of the Savage Land, which is a hidden jungle in Antarctica. He was born Kevin Plunder, the son of Lord Robert Plunder, who set off searching for an undiscovered element he believed existed in nature. Classic treasure hunting stuff, you know? Lord Plunder eventually found what he deemed anti-metal, and later this was reworked to be a different isotope of vibranium. Anyways, fast forward some time and Lord Plunder and his son Kevin are in the Savage Land and Lord Plunder is struck down by the barbaric tribe that exists there. They're about to do the same to Kevin when the child is saved by a saber-toothed tiger named Zabu. Kevin is given the name Kazar and throws in a few training montages here and there and suddenly Kazar is the protector of the Savage Land. His father left for him a medallion of antimetal that he split in two to give to his two sons. This antimetal, which again is later revealed to be a type of vibranium, is called antimetal because it can deconstruct or melt nearby metals with the energy it gives off. That's a nifty trick. The medallion is more of a stepping stone for better things once the two halves are joined again, so that's why it's at the bottom of this list. But I just found it important to mention that there are different variations of vibranium that can be used for good and, as we'll see later, for evil. The Hawkeye TV show is set to introduce the fan-favorite superhero Echo, who was born deaf but has gone on to become an incredible superhero. Her real name is Maya Lopez, and although it's unclear exactly what her backstory will be in the MCU, she has a fascinating history. Originally, she's a Native American from the Cheyenne Nation, and her father secretly worked as an enforcer for Kingpin. Then her father was executed under Kingpin's orders, with the mob boss then taking Echo under his wing and training her to be a fierce fighter. It helped that Maya had the ability to copy the motion that she sees fairly well, hence the name Echo, and that made her the last person you'd want to meet in a dark alley somewhere. Of course, she'd eventually learn the truth about Kingpin's involvement in her father's demise and turned against him, becoming her own hero. Again, for the MCU, I don't know exactly how they can work in her backstory as she's so connected with Kingpin and Daredevil, two characters who we're not sure will return in the MCU, but she's already proving popular enough in the Hawkeye show that a spin-off series is already in the works. With all that, I hope we get some instances of her staff in action. She's obviously very capable with a lot of different weapons, but one of the best is a staff that has a sliver of vibranium in it. I just don't think we have enough staff fighters in the MCU, right? You know what's better than one vibranium dagger? Two vibranium daggers, obviously. Who needs anything fancy and high-tech when you have two vibranium daggers by your side? Warpath sure doesn't. Born James Proudstar, the mutant started off with a vendetta against the X-Men and wanted to get revenge on Professor X because his older brother John Proudstar was on the X-Men and immediately perished. Over the years, James's rage subsided and he's been part of the X-Men and the X-Force. It's his time with the X-Men that I really want to highlight. After James officially joined the mutant superhero group, Storm welcomed him with a gift. No, the gift wasn't an explanation of what happens to a toad if it gets struck by lightning, but rather it was a pair of Wakanda forged vibranium daggers. Incredibly sharp and dangerous, being made of vibranium means they are capable of absorbing sound waves, which is always a plus. These daggers helped Warpath become even more dangerous as he already had speed, strength, invulnerability, agility, and fine-tuned senses. So take all of that and throw in some indestructible daggers and you got yourself a solid character. Remember how I said vibranium has a ton of uses? Well, would you believe me if I said that some people have vibranium tattoos? Of course you'll believe me. I'm the voice on the internet. Everything I say is true. Nezhno Abademi, the son of a Wakandan woman and a Russian man, suffered a lot of psychological trauma as a kid, and that really affected his mutation, which is muscle mass expansion. This means that Nezhno has the ability to drastically increase his size and strength. Basically, he's like a big pufferfish, only like seven times scarier. Like it's 
stated that at his absolute peak, he's able to go up against the Hulk. How cool is that? Eventually, he takes the name Gentle, which might sound low-key hilarious, but it's because the character spent a lot of time meditating to control his power and emotions. So this is where the vibranium tattoos come in. His mutation gives him seizures and is proving to be fatal on his body. The only way to keep his powers in check in a way that doesn't just destroy him is a series of vibranium tattoos all over his body that help suppress his power. So while these tattoos aren't just a straight up weapon, I think it's interesting to see someone using vibranium as a powerful suppression technique. Alright, I started this list talking about Kevin Plunder, who would go on to become Kazar, the Lord of the Savage Land. But there's more to his story. Turns out he actually has a brother named Percival Plunder, who is more on the evil spectrum and wants to gain the other half of the medallion his father left to Kevin. And yes, I'll get into his vibranium weapon in a second, but I just needed a brief aside to say that he has probably the most hilarious supervillain name ever. He calls himself The Plunderer. First off, that's already not a name that strikes fear in your heart, and two, his last name is Plunder, and he calls himself The Plunderer? What? What type of non-creative effort is that? You don't see Otto Octavius calling himself the Octaviuser, or like Johann Schmidt calling himself Schmitter. What if Wilson Fisk decided to go by the Fisker instead of Kingpin? So yeah, sorry, Plunderer? Not a great name. But would it surprise you to learn that the Plunderer once teamed up with Thanos? So I guess he's doing something right. Anyway, one thing he did was use the Antarctic Vibranium to make a specialty vibro gun, which is an interesting concept as it weaponizes Vibranium's sound wave absorbing tendencies. But as cool as the gun is, I'm just not going to get over the plunderer name. Where's Ant-Man asking if it's too late to change the name when you need him? So, there once was a superhero known as Maverick, who the mutant Sabretooth just absolutely wrecked. After that devastating injury where Sabretooth impaled him in the chest and threw him off a roof, David North reluctantly agreed to join the infamous Weapon X program. After the transformation, he took up a new name, Agent Zero, and gained upgrades to all of his powers. He has no scent, has an intense healing factor, and a corrosive was added to his already established concussive blasts that stops an enemy's healing factor. He basically was created with the intent of eliminating Wolverine, but that's something he never had an interest in actually doing. On top of all of this, he was given a vibranium suit, which made him completely silent when he moved. You see, all that sound absorbing ability isn't just for fun. It's actually incredibly useful when it comes to being a top assassin. The suit enhances him and makes him even more dangerous, so that's why I put it on this list. Also, to throw it in there, Agent Zero has been known to use a rifle with anti-metal aka discount vibranium bullets. Yeah, I'd definitely want those all the time. Ulysses Claw was a minor antagonist in Avengers Age of Ultron and a secondary villain in the Black Panther movie, and he is the very definition of when life gives you lemons, make lemonade type of individual. We first met him when he's selling vibranium to Ultron, but an offhand comment that compares Ultron to Tony Stark leads to Ultron slicing off Claw's arm. Now, if you're a black market smuggler who just got your arm sliced off by a giant sentient robot, you might be encouraged to get out of that profession. But nope, Claw stays at it and undergoes a major upgrade. Next time we see him, he's converted a vibranium mining device into a new arm that is able to deal devastating sonic blasts. Now, I mention that because in the comics, things go down a bit differently. The character jumped into a massive sonic converter that was powered by vibranium, and emerged after being transformed into a superhuman whose body was composed of living sound. So vibranium basically turned Comic Claw into a living weapon, and I think that definitely counts for this list. Oh, and fun fact, even though vibranium helped create him, it turns out that Vibranium is also Comic Claw's big weakness, and it seriously hurts him. That's fascinating. Hawkeye has an arrow for just about every situation, so would it surprise you to learn that he keeps a stash of vibranium arrows around? I mean, why wouldn't you, right? But here's what's interesting. The most devastating vibranium arrows in Hawkeye's arsenal are actually the ones he made from Antarctic vibranium. Yeah, with those arrows, Hawkeye can break down the molecular bonds in just about any metal, including adamantium, and turn them into a liquid. So whenever the Avengers are facing one of those giant robot armies that tend to swarm around the world every so often, it would certainly help to have Hawkeye on your side with those arrows. Master Archer plus arrows that melt metal? Can you think of a better combination? 
I think William Stryker was one of the best villains we ever saw in the X-Men films. Yeah, sorry Apocalypse and whoever Jessica Chastain was supposed to be, you just didn't make the cut. But Stryker, on the other hand, did some serious damage across multiple confusing timelines, so it's no wonder that his comic counterpart is just as bad. He started traveling around and recruiting all sorts of mutant-hating individuals to join his mission, and eventually this group started to call themselves the Purifiers, probably because they wanted to purify the Earth from mutants, not because they sold air purifiers as their side gig to make money, but hey, you never know. And the most dangerous thing about this group was how well armed they were. They knew in dealing with mutants they had to be absolutely prepared for everything, which meant they were mostly armed with vibranium-based weapons. See, vibranium-based weapons are already strong, but put them in the hands of a well-trained group of fanatics and they're quite powerful. Now, this next guy gets it. When you have an abundance of vibranium, better make something big. Dr. Ferid Ekmiksik was a specialist working in Eastern Europe, whose main mission was developing weapons made from the Antarctic vibranium. The best thing that he developed was an enormous vibranium tank. I mean, come on, how cool is that? Forget flimsy handheld weapons, when you have the technology, you make a vibranium tank. I don't really have much to say about this, but I'm just saying if Thanos came into that final battle with a few vibranium tanks on his side, then I think things would have been much easier for him. The first major shield to show up on this list is Red Guardian Shield. Now, it hasn't been confirmed if the Red Guardian Shield in the MCU is made of vibranium, but it kind of looks like it, right? I just don't know where they would get the material. On the flip side, Red Guardian Shield in the comics has a fascinating history behind it. Originally, it was not made from vibranium and not as directly a ripoff of Cap Shield. It looked more like an actual shield rather than a frisbee. But after some years like this, someone had the bright idea to upgrade the shield and give it the vibranium vibranium treatment. So I've mentioned daggers and staffs and other straight up weapons earlier, but none of them have the history that this next vibranium weapon has. The Skybreaker is a vibranium sword that was forged in ancient Wakanda and held by the Wakandan royal family. When the giant vibranium meteor crashed into Earth, the first Wakandan king, Bashenga, studied it relentlessly. With the help of his daughter and son, he built a smithy and forged the first vibranium weapon on Earth, the Skybreaker Sword. Bashenga used this sword as he ruled over Wakanda, and besides it being an indestructible royal artifact, it has special properties associated with it. For example, it's an energy conduit that can transform small amounts of energy into larger amounts of energy, a feature that's reminiscent of Black Panther's suit in the Black Panther movie. Also, since it produces such a large amount of energy, prolonged contact with the blade can damage living tissue by giving it burns, scarring, or even cancer. So don't fall asleep and cuddle up with it, okay? On the flip side, it strengthens non-living materials by touching it, so overall it's a really awesome vibranium weapon. Yes, Ultron and Vision have their own personalities, but I do think you could classify both of them as a weapon. And yes, I know saying that about Vision sort of makes me sound like the evil Hayward from WandaVision, but I mean, is that not correct? Vision is a powerful weapon, and even though he has sentience now, I don't think that changes the fact of the matter. Anyway, yes, Ultron and Vision were both made of vibranium, but with different levels. Ultron had a basic vibranium sheathing that coated his body, and he wanted to further upgrade that by putting his mind into Vision who was made with a mixture of vibranium and synthetic tissue. And we've seen what these two creations can do when they really let loose. Ultron was more than a match for the Avengers physically, and Vision can only be beaten if he's too distracted by Wanda or if the plot demands it. I think the Black Panther suit is one of the most technologically advanced suits in the entire MCU. Like, it's right up there with Iron Man's suit in terms of power. And while Iron Man's last suit in the MCU had amazing nanotechnology that allowed him to produce destructive weapons just by thinking of them, I think the Black Panther suit is both more durable and has a better defense. As we saw in the Black Panther movie, Shuri developed the new suits that could not only retract and expand with just a mental thought, but also gave it the ability to store up kinetic energy and unleash it on the opponents. So if you punch T'Challa, the suit will absorb it and he'll be able to hit you with it like it's a reverse Uno card. Now imagine Black Panther fighting Thanos on Titan. I think that fight might have gone a bit differently just because of the suit. 
The reason I'm putting Captain America's shield at the top of this list isn't just because it's the most perfect offensive and defensive weapon in the MCU, but also because of what it symbolizes. It's supposed to inspire hope and be a beacon for justice. When you see the shield, you're supposed to feel safe and secure, and Steve Rogers did a great job in doing that. John Walker? Not so much. But again, on top of all that symbolic stuff, it's just a straight up cool weapon. Being made of vibranium allows it to bounce off things like walls or people's faces much easier than a normal shield. And unless you're facing a mad titan, chances are the shield isn't going to break. Over the course of the MCU, we got to see Steve use it in a variety of different ways. It stopped bullets, wedged open doors, and protected him from both explosions and from falling long distances. If you're going into battle, that's probably the best handheld weapon to bring by far. Okay, I didn't mention Falcon, aka the new Captain America suit, but that's just because I think it still has a serious design flaw. Sure, it's made of vibranium and is bulletproof, but the top of Sam's head is still exposed. Like, wear a hat or something, dude. Just for that reason, that suit could not make the list.